Is being triggered a good thing or a bad thing? Hey guys, so I just did a video uh, just recently um, and posted it on being triggered. You know, are you being triggered? And, you know, a lot of times people will have a negative condemnation about it or negative thoughts about being triggered or um, want to blame somebody else, you know, but um, what I, I, what I want to bring to your attention is, you know, that is one of the ways that the universe works with you to help you along your journey so you know where you are. So it's a positive. It's, it's not a negative. And although we may think it is or have the feeling or the experience that it's negative, with whatever it is that brings it up within us, it's to help us to see it, what we're not seeing for ourselves, right? Because we can only see so much of ourselves. And I, you know, some of that we learned in uh, psychology, the things that we can see about ourselves and things that other people can see about us that we can't see about us. And then there's the whole other perspectives, right? And so that is actually very in alignment with, you know, the whole scenario about being triggers. Because a lot of times the, uh, if we have unresolved things that we don't deal with and we kind of forget about them, especially from lifetime to lifetime, um, you know, we may completely forget about them and then just kind of let them. And as I've used the scenario before about like the, uh, so you have the mud in the water when you, when you shake it up and you're being triggered, you have that. But when you let it settle to the bottom and you forget about it, it's kind of just staying there. And you're resonating at that level of evolution, right? Because that's what we have deemed it and put it and made it, we wrote it as that, whether that was our judgment, our belief systems, or just something very simple that happened in childhood. We took it the wrong way, or we experienced something that we didn't want to experience and we never dealt with it. We kind of, instead of people will say, oh, you put it in the closet or you shove it under the, the rug, but it kind of just simmers to the bottom. And when the universe says, okay, uh, you're at a better place now, um, it's kind of time to take a look at that. You know, you've evolved, you're more intelligent, you're more, have the experience, the understanding, and the know where you are now from where you were then, it's time to take a look at it. And sometimes the universe will bring people and put them in your path to help you to take a look at that and to bring that up, to stir up. The, the mud and gook from the bottom to bring it to the top to rise so you can take a look at it. And then you can, again, just do whatever you want to do about it. You can either keep it, you know, and push back under the rug because we all have choice. It's our decision. Um, and we don't have to, but the universe works in a way that's for us. And that's one of the ways it's through our triggers that we engage with. And it may not even be the simple fact that, you know, because we'd forget about it, you know, it's not intentional, you know, somebody may just say something, they trigger it and bring it up for you. And then we may be mad at them and then relive it out because instead of being present, we'll just react on the same thing uh, versus using our current awareness now and just continue and keep it, right? And so we can put it back under the rug, but if we're practicing and being true to ourselves, who we are now and not them, then we're able to take a look at it and decide, do we want to keep it or do we want to get rid of it? And then you do whatever processes that you need to do in order to overwrite that and change it, whether it's inner child work or if it's shadow work or if it's past life healing or energy work or what are, journaling. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. And so I work with, you know, clients on how to do that, you know. And so one of them, um, just to give reference to, you know, she had a very, it was like a, a, an abusive father. And so he's passed. So she couldn't really talk to them to help heal it and to do that. So she's, she hovered over it, you know, she kept it within herself and she didn't deal with it and she was suffering through life and then you know to deal with it she was doing other things to help cope which weren't really healthy but in our coaching sessions you know it, it helped to it helped her to write about it and although they are no longer in the physical form doesn't mean they can't hear you and understand you because they are still available from the other side right and so that's where a lot of people come with mediumship right and you can go see a medium to help channel and heal it through mediums right um 
you can do that as well. That's another healing technique um, because they can communicate from the other side, you know, and as they're on the other side and they're seeing their life review and their truth, you know, they're more likely to be aware and understand what they've done in this lifetime and they can see and want to heal it, right, to help heal you, right? It, because it's to play, right? And it's so they're on the other side. They're able to see from this side, you know, from that side to the side. So there's a lot of things that you can do. You're not stuck in continuing to live that. You have a lot of free will to change and choose what you want to choose. And just as if you want to, Abraham Hicks talks about you can choose bondage if you want. You're so free uh, to choose whatever it is that you want. And so you can either continue to harbor it or um, suffer from it, you know, like a cyst, you know, filling, filling up with pus that you're going to blow up at one time point when the trigger comes, you know, um, <laughs> not to get too graphic on that. That was, I don't know where that came from, but it's like a boil, like simmering under the bottom, you know, just manifesting and, um, you know, simmering. Um, and then a lot of that times that creates illness in our body and uh, wrong choices, bad choices, you know, that help us co cope with certain things. And so, of course, she had, you know, the addictions that she had to work with. We had to work with on that. And then, you know, but the, the writing of it, you can do. That's a method, you know, for triggers um, from family or if, you know, you're having cycles, repeated cycles, you know, because of something in childhood and it comes up. Um, you can write to those who've passed over um, and just put yourself, just put it all on paper and then you can burn it or you can send it, you know, address it to the other side, you know, and then bury it or burn it or whatever you want to do with it. But there's so many different ways and things that you can use to heal yourself. We are never stuck. Everything is for us. Everything, there is always a way, right? It's just choice. But when we're in the present moment, we have the ability to see, okay, this is a cycle or a path, you know, that I keep experiencing and it's a cycle within my life, whether it's the relationships that I have or it's um, the traumas or, you know, I'd only make so much money, <laughs> you know, I can never get past that ceiling. Um, where are these coming from, right? It, it, for instance, like if you grew up in a family, you know, and your parents struggled over finances, you know, your ceiling may only be set to a certain level. Or you may be like, I can only spend so much on myself because that's only what the, the parents set as for themselves, right? So a lot of things we take on from our parents, our environments, you know, our, our experiences, our lessons. But as we evolve through time, you know, if, if we're still living that, that muck on the bottom keeps us at that energy and vibration, that level, right? And so running behind the scenes on the program, that's where we are. And so a lot of times the universe brings those triggers in, uh, which is for you not against you. So you can bring those up and see them if you're not moving along the timeline and evolution to something better, right? And so it brings it up for you. So nothing is ever against you. Um, and that's one thing that I've learned, not only through my own experiences, you know, because I've been there um, and I've had my own cycles, you know, my patterns from my parents, you know, the mother, uh, father split, they were got divorced, there was abuse, you know, my mother dated a person who wasn't an alcoholic and then a druggie and, you know, you name it. But, um, I mean, those are my experiences that I grew up with. And so this is how it all helped me to see and understand and evolve through my way and to take, you know, counseling degree and uh, nutritional degree. Um, all these things were there for me to evolve, right? And so they helped me heal myself, my, my karm, you know, my cycles and my patterns and, you know, my triggers, you know, and so I was able to take a look at, and then of course, the psychic development, the mediumship and all those intuitive abilities, because you kind of need both, you know, and that's one of the things that um, doesn't help when we're trying to work on ourselves and heal ourselves, because we don't, we negate the whole spiritual aspect of it, and we don't incorporate it. And so it, healing would be so much more effective if we understood and accepted it and, and brought those together, the alternative met methods and psychic methods and then our healing methods, if we brought it all together um, as one, because we are both, right? We evolve through time. We are an evolving being from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime, experiences over and over again. And some of what's now happening is from the past 
to bring it back up that we've forgotten about it. And it's not unless we go into the deepness of who we truly are and find that to bring it up so we can see it, right? And so a lot of times, again, that's just the universe triggering us, you know, to help us to see it. Because if you actually, when you're being triggered and you, and you wait a minute and you pause and you see and you question yourself, where is this coming from within me? Because if you're the one feeling it, then it's within you. It's not outside of you. It's what's outside of you that's creating that to come up within you. So you look within. If you literally look within and go into that feeling, that emotion or whatever it is that's coming up for you, that vision, you're going to get some information on it. <clears throat> so like for me, um, you know, I, I turn in, right? If there's something that's kind of irritating me or emotions or something that's just not right, because everything is love. So when you're outside of the, the stream of love, you know, um, there's something going on. Right? So whenever you're in, in the midst of a trigger or something that's coming up or that's not feeling in alignment with love, with happiness, joy, abundance, um, and we go into that, we take a moment and pause and go into that, we're going to see what it is. And that can be through any timeline. And you'll have a remembrance of what that is, because it's energetic. It's when you have that trigger that will take you to that memory. And that's the memory that's written. And that memory can be overwritten by something else doing different modalities, right? And so, like I said, shadow work, inner child work, it could be forgiveness, it could be um, whatever uh, process that you need to do in order to do it, right? It could be just journaling or writing or sending a letter or communicating with the person who's passed over. So whatever that case may be, you know, once you have the image or the emotion that comes up, then you can do something about it, right? And just choosing that you're wanting to do something to change it. But nothing, again, is, is against you. It's all for you. Triggers are there for you based on where you are on your evolution to help you to move into something different, to choose something different. Because the universe and the source is saying she's ready, but she's she's not doing it or he's not doing it. You know, it's like a way to help you move forward. Right. Let's go. It's kind of like the child at the end of the of the um, uh, what do you call it? Like when all the children are in line to go to the cafeteria and this one child in the back is kind of lagging in the back, you know. The universe is trying to be like, okay, come on, come on, come on, let's go. You got to go eat, you know. <laughs> so it's kind of like that scenario. Um, you know, because sometimes we don't want to look at things and some we don't want to. That's why there's kind of sitting in the muck in the mud under the water. We That's why we put it in the closet or put it in the rug because we don't want to deal with it. We're not ready to deal with it. We're not ready to see it and, and heal it or, you know, kind of break it down and to understand it. And that's OK. But the universe uh, will bring triggers to you, you know, and that can be through other people. Um, and it can be through just our patterns, our life uh, dreams, you know, um, I had people who would wake up every morning in like fear, you know, and so it's like, you have to go and deal with these things in order for them to stop, right? You can't keep just putting them under the rug, because it's not going to do any good. Um, but yeah, I kind of just wanted to put it out there, you know, a lot of people kind of look at um, triggers as as bad or negative, but it's actually for you. Um, so it's a good thing. And so when we're being triggered, we don't want to like, toss it out to somebody else. They're actually helping you to bring it up. We don't want to blame them or shame them or, you know, um, they're part of the play in the role, right? And so they actually are or have agreed, you know, prior to at some point, I'm going to come around and I'll help you remember, right? And so there's your agreement. And if you accepted that agreement at some point, you're going to have that experience, right? They're going to show up when, maybe when you're least expecting it in a different form, because we're not going to remember who they are or what we agreed to. We don't remember these things before coming in. Um, and so that's the experience of it, you know, a lot of times from lifetime to lifetime. Um, and so if you're not, and it's like, if you're not moving forward, you know, I'll check in and then I'll show up and, you know, here you go, here's your trigger. And then you get to choose what you want to do with it, right? And so at that point, what are you going to do with it, right? Are you going to recreate it and blame them and be angry at them or are you going to be like oh let me turn in let me see let me see if i'm ready to deal with this now right because you've had time um, you know from childhood to an adulthood you've had quite a bit of time quite a bit of living 
quite a bit of understanding to where you would be able to heal and deal with it and handle it, right? Um, and then there's always different ways that can help. You can go see somebody to talk to. You can get coaching. You can get um, all the different modalities. You can go to see a counselor, different, different ways. So, so there's a lot of different um, ways to help you out with that. And for me, because I understand and know this from that perspective of not only my own personal experience, but my connecting and my channeling of being on the other side, the near-death experience, and having this all put together for me is like if if somebody's triggered by something I say or I do, I'm like, yay, it's time for them to heal it. It's time for them to look at it. It's time for them to move on. You know, I look at it as a good way, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, you deserve it. You know, my, you know, what I triggered you, I'm saying it's for you, right? And so it's for me, it's a positive thing. I don't look at it as a negative thing. And so when um, people, <clears throat> which brings me to this other thing here, which just happened, um, like I had, this person had made a, a video and I was like agreeing, you know, with what they said. I wasn't, you know, saying anything. But then I said about myself, how, you know, for me, how it is in relation to what they were talking about in their topic. And so... It triggered them, you know, and that's good, right? Because now she gets to in, to look at that because she, she had said she had cycling going on. And cycles is another thing in our mind. Like when we're caught on something and we can't drop it, the mind keeps cycling. That's an indicator there's a, a, a pattern going, that there's something that is needing to be dealt with, something that we need to look at and see. And she said it was something that triggered her from the past which hurt her and so she's even speaking that she she has had that experience but yet she hasn't really dealt with it and so when there's something that's triggering you and then you're constantly in your mind about that's that's meaning there's something you want you need to look at so you can release that and deal with it right and so if instead of blowing up at the person because she <clears throat> she was putting it out there in another video that she was cycling about it but you want to do the work on it, right? And it's okay that she's acknowledging that she has the the cycle, the pattern that was happening. But is she going to do the work on it, you know? Or is she just putting it out there that it's the other person because, you know, they don't believe that's what should have been said. But when I was actually just talking about myself, she took it personally about herself, right? It had nothing to do with her. I was talking about myself. So when when there's triggering going on, you know, you turn in, you look at it, you know, if your mind is cycling on something, a topic, you have to see, like, why is my mind cycling? Her mind was cycling, mine wasn't. I wasn't affected by it at all. I was talking about myself, right? But she took it personally as her, as an identity, right? And so how does it relate to her? And it because it triggered her because of her past. So that means there's something there that she needs to look at. Why did you judge it like that? Because everything is for you. There's nothing against you. So even in our situations, and you can see this through a lot of people who are sharing their experiences, it's made them who they are today. It's helped them evolve. So as it is, and so it is, right? So that's how it's been created. And so that is the way it is. Everything is for you in your creation and evolution because you are a totality of who you are today because of where you've been, right? And you've evolved through it. And so whether it's helped you to learn something or made you stronger or made you confident or made you change paths, it's all for you, right? And so whatever that is um, that you're getting out of that situation, whether it's your mind cycling or you're being triggered about emotions or feelings or you're noticing patterns in your life, whatever is that that's triggering for you, um, you definitely want to take a look at it. And when we do want to judge another person based on that um, or condemn them or say something bad, you know, about another person, you're just recreating that for you. And so you're going to have that <clears throat> come up for you again in the future. So it's just the recreating of the cycle because at some point she didn't deal with it, whatever that was. She let it manifest and set fester, you know. And so it came to a point, you know, when somebody talks about it for themselves, 
you know, you take it personally or you see something about it that creates this illusion for you. And so it's just going to continue. And so she'll probably end up, if she hasn't done anything about it for herself, she'll experience that again, right? And that's just basically how that works. Because uh, a person, like I said, you know, the person in their own ignorance may just be talking about themselves and your person's going to take it personally or a person just going to say something without intentionally saying it, you know, either in the right or wrong way, but because you decide it's right or wrong, it's going to trigger you. So it's, it's really about understanding how that all works, but everything is for you is to help you evolve, you know, from place to place, you know, and so it's the bringing up the stuff that helps you to see it so you can change it and overwrite it, if that makes sense. All right, that's pretty much just what I wanted to share on that there. I know it kind of was supposed to be a little short one, but it turned out to be a little bit long one because I kept getting all this information. And that's the thing with like the writing and the channeling. Um, like I like to make notes so I can kind of stay on topic because what happens with the channeling and the information, there's so much that's connected to it. I can go off in like 10 different directions with it, you know, and <laughs> because there's so, that's just how it is, right? And so everything is connected because the way the whole universe works, you know, everything, um, it's efficient. And I made a video on efficiency of how the universe works. So um, check that out. I'm not going to go into that because I want to cut this one short <laughs> here. I don't want to keep going on, but check that one out. It's about the efficiency, how everything works together. Um, so it's efficient. And, but yeah, that's how, you know, the triggers are, it's just there to help you and it's not good or bad, you know, and there's no judgment against it. It's there to help you. Um, everything is created for you, not against you. All right. So happy journeys.